Hello, welcome back to More Fun Fixing It. Today I've got this little ZX Spectrum 48K and it says red screen, yellow board. Okay, now that doesn't mean yellow border, that means something else, but I'll show you in a second. It's missing one foot and the case is in really nice condition. Keypad looks good, faceplate looks nice, probably needs a bit of a clean. Yeah, there's a little bit of grubbiness on there, but that's gonna be easily sorted. But what's interesting about this one is what's going on at the back here. That is not the right color motherboard. I'll show you. Oh. So it's an issue 4A, but it's the very unusual yellow motherboard. It's got yellow uh, substrate and blue silk screen. I had one of these in the charity auction last year or the year before actually, and it sold for quite a bit more than I was expecting because uh, these are, they're not very common. They're not exactly super rare, but they're not very common. I haven't got one. And this uh, is something that I'll be trying to acquire for my own collection. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty thing, which is unusual really, because it's gonna be inside a case and you'll barely, barely ever see it, unless you put it on a, on a wall. I know someone who has put it on the wall. Hello, Matthew. All right, so we've got no chips socketed. We've got all original RAM. Um, sorry, the ULA is a Dash 7, which is good. Um, but yeah, nothing else is socketed apart from the ULA. Everything else looks okay. I can't see anything untoward at first glance. Sometimes you'll see a burnt resistor over here or over here. Um, all of the caps look in reasonably good condition. No signs of leakage. It's got the right video encoder chip on it. The voltage regulator hasn't got a crater inside it. It's in good condition and on the back there are no signs of this have, having had any work done. But I don't know why. I'm not sure if it's just uh, an instinct. It feels to me like this one might be a fragile board. It just, it just feels that way. I'm not basing that on anything else except from having a look at what's on here. So let's do our checks. Multimeter first. In resistance. And ground in the black lead, I'm checking the um, input side, which is the bottom lead on the voltage regulator. And that's 190 something K, that's fine. And the output side is fine, 900 ohms. And then Checking on the lower memory. I always forget which ones are which. I think it is minus five. It's, this is either minus five or plus 12, but that's okay. And the plus 12, let's call it, is 300 ohms. I would want that to be higher, maybe. But as long as it's not a dead short, I'm, I will risk turning it on. And that's fine for the plus five. The next thing is the coil. I still not had a dead coil on one of these. And I know Happy Little Dio's Jim has recently had one. And so I'm, I'm still waiting for my go with a dead coil, but it's uh, open circuit on that, so that way and closed circuit this way. Then put the multimeter in diode test mode. And let's start with the black lead in the middle of both of them, TR4. That's nothing that way and nothing that way. And then the red lead in the middle, I should get, oh, get absolutely nothing. Oh, I'm not in diode mode. <laughs> right, let's start that again because I messed it all up. Right, so uh, with the multimeter in diode mode, black lead in the middle, red lead on the top, nothing. Red lead on the bottom, nothing. Red lead in the middle, Black lead on the top, 0.6 and 0.6, that's good. And then black lead in the middle of TR5, 0.7 and 0.7, that's good. And then red lead in the middle, nothing on the top and should have one point something on the bottom. Okay, so the transistors, TR4 and TR5 are good. There is something else, but I'm, I'm happy to turn this on now in a controlled manner with uh, current limiting power supply. 
just to make sure nothing goes horribly wrong. I need my my Henry lead, my instant composite mod, no, not that in. Uh, and I'm going to put this into the telly for now next to me because the capture device that I'm using at the moment doesn't pick up uh, a signal very quickly. It takes a few seconds and I'm going to be turning this off and then oh, on and then off rapidly just to make sure it's okay. Right, and my Steam Card Pro, which will give me an instant readout on the voltages. But it'll also run diagnostics as well. So here we go, voltages here, 12, 9, plus 5, minus 5. Okay, it's working, and I have an output. So it's not a very good one. Plug this into... Um, Let's try that. Yeah, this, the um, capture device can't even lock onto that signal. Why was Paul getting a red screen? Okay, okay. Okay, let's come up with RAM fail. You can see there. It's, um, the RAM has failed somewhere. Oh, it's just an earth problem. Oh, that would probably work on capture now, but you can see. Let's, uh, let's try the Brendan all... Oh, so the Retroleum diagnostics as well. So IC10, that says just at the bottom there. I'll run this once more. Okay, right then, in that case, we'll just get on with that. At the same time as I change this memory, I'm thinking I'm going to composite mod it, composite mod it as well to give um, a chance of actually getting a display out of the, out of the uh, computer on capture. So IC10 is this one here. I can see IC9 and 11 marked here, but uh, IC10 is there. Didn't get warm. Right, so that I don't desoldered the wrong one. I'll just put a little cross on there. I'm going to try the desoldering gun, but I have some concerns. I can always fix any problems that I come across, so I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to flood a little bit of extra solder onto each one of these, give it the best chance. All right, wish me luck. It's quite hard to tell if uh, if that's released the chip enough to, to lever it out, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to put some hot air on it and gently take it out. The key to using hot air to take one of these out is to not not to rush. If you take your time, you'll get the chip out without too much problems. But again, you, you can't take too long because you don't want to dwell with heat on there for too long. But you can feel when the chip starts to move and then that's the point where you can actually start to lever a little bit. But don't go mad. My trusty DRAM tester. I haven't tested a 4116 for a while, actually. It's dead. Straight away dead. Okay, well that's reassuring. Let's stick a socket in there and um, put a new chip in. Actually, I'm just gonna give the this an inspection just in case. Looks good to me.
before we go any further, let's give this composite mod. Disconnect it from the modulator. Disconnect the wires from the board. That one's the plus five volts and that one is the video into the modulator. And then we just need a capacitor. I like to bend it like this. And then drop it into the board like that. But also feed this in the negative uh, lead on the capacitor into the into the modulator at that point and then you just got to wiggle it out somehow there we go solder that side in Right, was that a nice simple repair? Let's get a chip actually to go in there first. We've got a 4116 here. Uh, it's an STC, the same as these ones. And oh, it's a slightly different silk screen on it. These are 84, 23, oh, 27, 23, 27, 27, 27, 27. They are a bit of a mix. And this one is 84, 49, so it's close enough. Make sure it works. Yes. Four blue lights on these is a pass. Okay. Now we've got a composite mod. Put that into there. Into there. Right, they're still running. I'm still not getting capture. Why am I not getting capture? It's just not a very good signal. Uh, but you can see on the screen, it's passed. Right, well, it wasn't the most complicated fix and there was only this, this one chip that was wrong, that was faulty. Uh, but I don't really want to mess around with this one too much. I could recap it, but it's working. Um, I'm not sure whether that's uh, the best idea. I'm torn on this one, whether I should recap it or not. It might be that if I recap it, I get some output on the capture. But I don't know why I wasn't getting anything. Right, capture sorted. Uh, using a really cheap catcher device that I didn't think I'd ever use again. Um, th yep, this one's done. I'm not going to recap it. This one's going back to Paul I, because it's uh, a motherboard that is a little bit different and I want to keep it as original as possible. That's why I put the same brand of chip in there. Um, I am tempted to actually remove the socket, um, but I'll let the, whoever's going to put this in their collection decide what to do with it uh, so for now i'm going to leave everything as it is and send it on its way oh let's check the keyboard first because the the tails look good on this membrane they actually look okay there we go oh we're missing a column down here And uh, okay, so missing. Oh, and they've come back. I might check the soldering actually on the back of the socket. Oh no, I've just noticed that there is there is a crack in the uh, 
in the membrane on this side. I'll take a picture so you can see it. So that's toast. Never mind. Easily fixed. I'll button this bond back up and send it back to Paul. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to do some screwing back together now. You don't need to watch this. Go on. Be on your way. Why are you still here? There's nothing, there's nothing to see. It's done. Just go. Fixed. Um, one. Lovely. Right, now go.